Hey guys, it's Tina and this is Matthew and he is 10 days old right now. I posted a Q&A on my Instagram a couple of days ago and so many people asked so many questions. I got like hundreds of questions. One of the main questions that I got, like one of the biggest questions that I got was how we are all adjusting, just like how the last week and a half has been and how the kids are adjusting to having a new baby in the house and it's been a really, really emotionally charged 10 days. And I'll tell you that it has nothing to do with what anybody would think that it had to do with. I know that like normally and like what I would have thought had I told myself that it would have been a crazy emotional 10 days, you know, like 10 days ago, I would have thought it was maybe because like the kids were um, not really enjoying the new baby or that there was a lot of jealousy or a lot of like crazy behavioral issues happening or something like that. Cause that's all stuff that happens, you know, with kids as they make adjustments to the amount of attention that they get and the amount of attention that someone new in the house gets. But I have found that when it comes to the kids, that's actually been the easiest thing. Um, the one, Whatever that was about, Matthew, man. Yeah, I think that like the kids have been the easiest adjustment so far. They are absolutely in love with Matthew. I know that like I talked about it a little bit on Instagram and like different comments and things that I was saying, but um, we actually let the kids play a big part in picking his name. And so it took us four or five days, but we finally came to an agreement that everybody liked and that was the name Matthew. They all really, really love him. The only time that I've seen any kind of like jealousy or anything like that is it's actually at the dinner table because usually about halfway through dinner every night, Lily will get up and she will go and sit on Alex's lap and finish her dinner there. I guess like just because of like how busy we've been, I know if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll know, but if you don't, we have been trying to renovate the entire lower floor of our house kind of in the next couple of weeks so that we can put it on the market because as you guys know, we own a three bedroom house right now and we've really been pushing to buy a five bedroom house, um, which in the GTA is over a million dollars. And so we need to get as much money as we possibly can out of our house in order to do that So yeah, it's been really really stressful in that sense and mainly stressful on me because I don't like to put babies down at all in like the first month after they're born. I find it really really stressful I find it really sad. I don't know. This is gonna sound totally weird I mean, I, I don't think it's actually weird I think it's like a biological thing But I feel like I'm just gonna put a baby down and they're just gonna die um, It's something that like it causes me a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry and I have to check on them like every few minutes the whole the whole time that they're lying somewhere without me and I know that that sounds weird and it's it's just because of like how society is today you know and what mothers are expected to do we're expected to just like move on and carry on with life and stuff like that but I do think that like it's a biological thing because back when we were doing what humans did for you know thousands and like tens of thousands of years and possibly hundreds of thousands of years before this industrialized society that we know today, if we did put our baby down and leave them somewhere, they would die. And so I think that it's like an innate fear and I think that it's natural to have it, but it's really, really stressful for me. And I hate, I hate putting babies down in like the first month and walking away from them. It's, it sucks. I have to say when I say that it's been really emotionally charged, it's been really emotionally charged for me because I always had this dream that like finally with one of our kids, Alex would be able to just like take some time off of work and I'd be able to, you know, like hold my baby for like a month and like not put them down a lot not worry a lot about doing things with the other kids because Alex would be there to pick up the slack and stuff like that and it just so happens that now we are doing renovations and so you know that's not really happening and um so yeah that's been really difficult on me and I know that like a lot of people that I've talked to they have asked me like how I'm feeling and what's stressful and stuff like that and I'll say like kind of like the big thing in our life right now that really sucks is that we're renovating a house again everyone everyone's first answer is like maybe this was the wrong time for you guys to renovate but um you know I remember when I first got onto YouTube years ago and I told you like I didn't know what we were gonna do because houses in the GTA are literally over a million dollars like that's the way that it is in Toronto and if you are a new family you're just expected to do that you're just expected to either buy a tiny little condo or rent forever you know Alex and I I don't know why I don't know why we got this idea that we were gonna keep on pushing until we were able to buy but 
Um, as you guys know, finally two years ago, we were able to buy a house in the GTA and now the house prices have dropped and interest rates have started going up, which means that I'm, I'm foreseeing that house prices are going to start going up soon. And so it's not the best time to sell a house, but since we're on the lower end of the market, our house price wouldn't have dropped as much as all like the really expensive houses. And so ideally, even though we would lose money selling right now, basically the only chance that we're ever going to get to own a house with like five bedrooms in it that would normally be like one and a half million dollars and now is like you know, three to four hundred dollars or three to four hundred thousand dollars cheaper, I suppose. Ideally, the time to buy a house like that is now for us. And so if we want a house that we can move into with our family that we'll never have to move out of again, this is kind of it. This is kind of crunch time and push time. And this is all we've got. And it just sucks. The timeline sucks, but we'd never be where we are if we didn't keep pushing. I just have to try and accept the fact that this too shall pass and that it's going to get us what we want and what we need for our family. Anyways, that being said, Alex has been doing a lot of renovations in the last week. And so basically the only time that he gets to, you know, sit down and hold Matthew and enjoy him is the five minutes before bed and the five minutes when we wake up and he holds him usually when we're eating meals. And so the only time that I've ever really seen any jealousy from any of the kids is, is Lily because as I said, halfway through every meal, she gets up and she wants to sit on Alex's lap. And so that's usually the time when he has to hand me the baby. But in like the second that it takes for him to hand me Matthew, she's like, feeling dethroned if you know what I mean like that's my seat for half of dinner time so yeah when it comes to the kids that's really been the only difficulty with like jealousy I will say that something that has been like huge for me or at least was in like the first couple of days after he was born is like we run a really free household like our kids do a lot of like running and screaming and cartwheels and playing and all kinds of stuff and I wouldn't say that it's like 100% free because like I do get mad when people are like screaming and stomping all day and there is a lot of that in our house too but I guess I didn't notice how rough all of our children are and how rough they play and just how dangerous it would be for a newborn since you know like Lily's almost who's having a nap here but she's almost three years old and so there's been three years with no baby like this in the house and so the way that play has changed and how much older all the children have gotten and stuff like that in the last three years really overwhelmed me in the first couple of days because you know I'd be sitting on the couch the day, honestly, the day Matthew was born, I was sitting on the couch downstairs because we had a home birth and I was breastfeeding him and James just like came running full speed into the room, jumped on the couch right, like right beside Matthew's head so hard that the whole couch like moved like a couple of inches backwards. And then he just proceeds to do a handstand on the couch right beside a baby that was like three hours old. And I was like, oh my god like it was nothing unusual it was totally behavior that happens all the time but it was just so shocking to me at like how dangerous it was and there have been so many things in the last week and a half that i've realized are like super super dangerous for a baby that weren't dangerous for our kids you know and one of the things is just like running full speed and jumping on furniture and like if matthew's on that furniture that poses a really dangerous situation. And so I've had to impose a lot of rules in the last 10 days. And I know that I've talked to you guys about this before, but James has ADHD. And I find that like one of the things that sets him off the most, one of the things that will like send him into, I don't know what to call it. I call it his frenzies. These moments of like a loss of control, basically. One of the things that sets him off is being told no, being told to stop, being relayed rules. And that's one of the reasons why our house is so free because in order to keep calm, in order to keep the peace, we do have to let as much stuff go as possible. And that's something that I've noticed probably since James was around four years old. So oh, I think he just got home now. And so I will say that that's like been one of the hardest things when it comes to like adjusting is the fact that you know like I'll be lying on the bed with the baby and and the kids will come just running and screaming full force down the hall into my bedroom jump on the bed and like keep running like they stand on my bed and run on my bed you know normally it would just be like a minor inconvenience it would be like oh someone stepped on my foot or something like that but now it's like oh my god someone is going to step on Matthew's head or fall on him 
and kill him and I don't even know how I will live with that so there's been a lot of like things that have come into play new rules that have come into play in the last 10 days including not standing on my bed not running on my bed not standing or jumping on the couch not running into a room at full speed screaming like there's been so many rules that have been imposed and so it has been a really really difficult adjustment in that sense because like I said with James especially as things are relayed to him as he's told no as new rules are relayed to him it kind of sends him into this frenzy of like it's really really hard if you don't have a child with ADHD but he kind of gets like his eyes get like unfocused and he's he's not himself for like until you snap him out of it and so that's been really really hard we've had to spend a lot of time and a lot of attention just like focusing on him and getting him to calm down and come out of these behavioral frenzies. I think like because of how much time we've had to spend focused on that, Lily has started to kind of up the ante a little bit with her behavior. So there has been a couple of things that have been harder when it comes to adjustment, when it comes to like how we've raised our kids and the liberties that we've given them and things like that. And so that's been difficult, but like not in the sense that like they're acting up because of Matthew, because even when I'm getting upset and being like, you're gonna kill the baby, blah, blah, blah. Usually the kids will just stop and be like, oh, I forgot about Matthew. And then just be like totally happy to see him again and wanna hold him and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say that like 99% of our issues have been jealousy or adjustment. I think that most of the issues that we've been having when it comes to like the whole family adjusting have just been the amount of rules that have had to be imposed since he's gotten here to try and keep everybody safe and not have somebody fall on his head or something like that. So that's been that. Um, I think that that's all that I really have to say about like the kids adjusting to him. It's, it's really been magical when it comes to their reaction to him. Like they love him so, so insanely much and all that they wanna do, hey buddy. You got some pie. You got some pie from Costco? No. Yeah, what was I saying? They've all been amazing with him, really. Like, they wake up every morning. I remember, I think the second morning after he was born, or the third morning after he was born, James came into our bedroom in the morning. I was already awake because he, he does not sleep. I will say that he is, he is our child that does not sleep. And so usually I can kind of like keep him on the bed beside me for a lot of the night breastfeeding and changing him and keeping him happy in that way. But from around like five or 6 a.m. he is only happy if he's sleeping on me, in which case I'm not sleeping because I don't want him to like roll off of me and fall on the floor or something like that. So um, we spend a lot of our mornings from like 5 a.m. until everybody wakes up like this which is like three hours of every morning. And I'm super, super tired, as you guys can probably see. Are you yep. Yeah, so like the second or third morning after he was born, I heard James come into the room because I was kind of rolled a little on my side and he was kind of like draped across my body. And then I heard James's sweet little morning voice. He said, oh my gosh, I forgot how small he was. But yeah, that's kind of been our life. Really, it's been magical how amazingly the kids have adjusted to him being here and how much they love him. And it's really been magical. Like it's been, I don't know, like way better than I ever expected because they all, they all love him so much. It's, it's made me so emotional because I remember when we had James, I had so much time to spend with him and I had so much time alone with him. And in some ways it was really amazing having my first child, but it's also been like incredible having a fourth child because you have this child that's like born into a family of brothers and sisters and they're just like loved on and doted on every day and every minute and I don't know it's like nothing I ever imagined and I think it's been different this time and it wasn't like this as much with Lily I mean it was a little bit but not as much because my kids were all really really young when I had Lily like James was not yet four Joe had just turned two and then Lily was born and so they really loved her but they didn't want to help as much they they had a lot of their own things going on they did want to hold her a little bit but then that kind of wore off and now they're all older and they can really appreciate the fact that he's an infant, the fact that he is so fresh and so new and talk about the things that he is going to learn and 
talk about what his first words are going to be and it's really incredible just like watching them all blossom into these older siblings that, that that they've never really been before if you know what i mean and it's kind of amazing having this baby that has this like ready-made family that loves him so much and and that's all he's ever gonna know he's never gonna be alone you know and so that that's really really cool i think that that's all i'm gonna say in this video there's obviously so so many emotions running through me and so much that like I could discuss with you about myself but I have talked for 20 minutes basically just about everybody else minus the small bit of sadness that I've expressed about once again having to renovate while we have a newborn but yeah I'll talk to you guys all soon again about my feelings and stuff like that because James got home and um, Joe is actually playing on the switch right now and so James wants me to set it up and all kinds of stuff so I will talk to you guys soon bye Matthew.